So in the previous video, we looked at how to get NDI out of Unreal. Uh, now we're going to look at how to get it into Unreal. So there's a few things that NDI does and doesn't work for. Uh, essentially, NDI has its own timing structure. It doesn't use PTP like 2110 does or anything like that. So timing critical, including lining up tr tracking data, uh, is kind of a no-go for NDI. So, you know, you can't really use an NDI camera with tracking data for a virtual set um, unless you can embed the tracking data directly in the NDI feed. Uh, you also can't use it for things like AR and what have you. So, can't really use it to bring camera information into Unreal for the purposes of, you know, rendering a camera uh for ar or xr or what have you um, but we can use it for a couple of other things so i have here a virtual set setup this is exactly the one i used for my tutorial about green screen uh way back when uh only difference is i'm using the blackmagic broadcast g2 and the most of Star Tracker instead of, I think at the time I was using the Panasonic UE 150 PTZ. So, you know, this could be your typical virtual set on a Monday at the movies or something, I, I don't know, whatever you want to use it for. So, however, what NDI is really great for is getting video into virtual sets like this one. So, because it is a software software based instead of hardware based uh, you know we're not limited to the number of SDI input pins or anything like that which is really handy to begin with uh, the next great thing is if you use NDI HX uh, then that is hardware accelerated uh, means your graphics card will decode it instead of your CPU meaning we can have tons and tons and tons of videos playing at the same time in your virtual set so that plus some of NDI's nice tools, you can output from OBS. So you could use an entire OBS setup to switch between various things to send into your Unreal Virtual Set. Uh, NDI has a screen capture system called uh, Screen Capture HX. So we could literally take a laptop you know, screen, throw it in here, PowerPoint or something like that. We could route a camera or a Zoom call in here. Um, you know, it could be a lot of different things. So I'm going to show you a couple of handy ways we can set this up as well as make it as flexible as possible. Um, as well as, sorry, I forgot to mention, um, you can buy actual hardware encoders. So Bird Dog has some great ones, uh, you know, little HDMI in, NDI out, so that you don't even need to install software to route some video. So. The virtual set is set up pretty straightforward. Uh, you know, got a cine camera with you know a live link component and a lens component. Got my lens file loaded. Uh, I've also got a cube with that like matte setup I did, um, just so we can make our green screen ever larger. And then what I've got here is I've got just a plane. Uh, I made it. I made it 16 by 9, and then scaled the whole thing down um, so that I know it's 16 by 9. And then I just put a very basic wooden trim around it. Um, I'm not a set designer, this probably is pretty ugly. Um, you know, I would say where I'm from in Brisbane that uh, brutalist architecture like this is way too common. Um, so what we are going to do is, of course, under plugins, um, make sure you have the NDI plugin. Now you probably already have, uh, oh, sorry, the Epic one, I also have installed the um, one NDI provides, but we're going to be using the Epic one that ships with the engine. Um, I already have the media stuff set up um, because I'm already outputting with Blackmagic to use the Ultimate to do all the compositing, everything like that. The last thing we're also going to need is you'll want the holdout. Um, now that is depreciated, or so it says. It says use composite core, so I've done that instead. What this lets us do is basically on my plane I have this holdout composite material, and that basically allows me to tell Unreal this plane, skip motion blur, skip depth of field, skip tone mapping, skip everything so that, it, you know, the output of it looks like the input of it, which is very important for this kind of stuff. In my media setup, so I have my Blackmagic output, it's outputting fill and key for the ultimate, that kind of stuff. Uh, I have two media inputs, I'm just going to use one of them today. Uh, so I'm going to choose the top one and I'm going to choose NDI. 
And then uh, now there's a few things in here, audio, video. Uh, I'm gonna make sure I capture video, that's fine. And then under NDI source, so I'm just going to choose the test pattern generator for the time being. You saw a couple of others, I'll get to that shortly. So I'm going to apply that. I'm then going to go into my media, you know, where I set up all of this, uh, and then bundles, and then the first bundle, and then the media texture. I'm gonna make a material, or I have a material that I'm going to use, that I'm just gonna apply that texture to. So here it is. Um, actually, I think I'm using the, oh, I am too. I'm just using the built-in material that he uh, bundle ships with. So I'll just replace this one with that one uh, and save. So there's a few ways to get media to start playing in Unreal. Um, you know, one of the common ones we use is just drag the bundle out like this and you'll see that that now activates and then you just, you know, hide this behind a wall or something and then it's there. Um, however, one thing I've started using recently is so much like we have the media capture tool that we use to output video, uh, we also have a media playback tool. And this just lets me select one or multiple bundles and hit play and it loads like that. And so now we have the NDI test pattern there so I can go back into my camera view, can hit capture and then we have you know NDI in our set and maybe I'll move the camera around or frame up the shot a bit better. So now we have, you know, this is looking very much like some sort of uh, maybe review show. Um, so now we have that. However, this is very inflexible, right? Uh, if I want to change it, then I have to go into the media source here and I have to choose something different. You know, maybe I want this test pattern, then I save it, you know, and then that's going to update. And that's kind of annoying, especially if we want to switch these things on air. So there is a better way. So if you have NDI tools, which I recommend have you getting, then there is this thing called a router or the tool, a tool called a router. Here it is, router. Um, so this is what's called matrix switching. Um, it's very common, mostly on hardware panels, but basically it allows me to have a bunch of sources and a bunch of outputs. And then I can switch what the output, sorry, what the input is going to what output kind of deal. Um, so it's not kind of like live switching, like a switcher like OBS or something, but it is very handy. Especially if you can hide it in camera shots or something like that. Uh, so the way this works is I hit the configure button here and then I start with my sources. So I'm going to, you know, I've got a couple of sources here. So I'm gonna have the test pattern from that machine on that one. I'm gonna have the test pattern from my laptop on this one. And then I've also set up a, the screen share on this one. Then on the output, I've just renamed the first channel to Unreal Source and put the label as UE. Uh, and then on this one, I could probably set this to test pattern, test pattern two. And then maybe this is PC share. So now that I have this set up, I can go back to my virtual set here, or the, sorry, the media profile. And then instead of selecting the test pattern, you can see it has a bunch of router sources now. So I'd have destination two, destination three, destination four, test pattern, and then Unreal source. And that's the one I created. So I'm gonna hit apply on that and save. And you'll see that it's just updated. So now what I can do is I can come over to my router here, I can select I can go out of edit mode. I can select my destination and then I can say, actually, I want that to be, uh, you know, that pattern or I want this to be the screen share and maybe because we're going to do some sort of presentation or what have you in here instead. And so this is sort of, you know, you could mix this, you could have OBS an OBS output as one of these destination shares. Um, NDI also has a great um, setup here called remote. Um, so if, let me find it, here we go, remote. And so what this lets you do is allows someone to remotely screen share through a web browser, the, an NDI source. Um, so if I choose, so 
I should have, I oh, didn't show up. Um, oh, it's because it's turned off, there we go. So if I go configure, and the I, oh, I doesn't see it still. Uh, but yeah, so essentially this allows me to have someone remotely screen share their screen as an NDI source that I could then put into Unreal, which is really, really cool. Um, and they don't have to install any software. It works like, say, a Google Meet or something where you just screen share through the browser. Uh, and then I could route that in as well. So, bit of a quick, uh, quick one. I don't know if, you know, if you have questions or something, let me know. I could dive a bit deeper into this. Um, however, this is just a really quick, easy way to, you know, and you could do multiple of these, right? You could have one on the right side, you have a different one on the left side, you know, you can add multiple. I can also go up here, you know, and add even more destinations to the matrix switcher. Um, you know, so I could have a bunch of those. You could put that matrix switcher on a little touch screen or something, or just on a different PC, bang, bang, bang. I'm going to put that in there, that in there, you know, and start to you know, really handy for a virtual set like this one. Cool. Thank you for watching. Hope you learned something or got some cool ideas. Um, this one was pretty straightforward, but anyway, hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you later.